All righty. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I um, guess I'll start the pledge. We'll start right off with that. Um, all stand. <laughs> all righty. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, to kick us right off, we'll start off with Dr. Vivanco, first year and doing amazing things here in our community, starting off strong and possibly one of the hardest years in education. So kicking right off, Dr. Vivanco. Good morning. I'm going to have Brian introduce me all the time. That's awesome. All right, well, thank you for being here. And uh, we'd like to say that, that it is truly an honor and pleasure to be here today to recognize a special lady. Hannah Hayano Semba was a student here at Mount Vernon High School in 1941 and 1942 before being forced into concentration camps. While she was here at Mount Vernon High School, she was fo a focused student who excelled in the sciences. Combining her equally high scores in math and English courses, she was truly a bulldog scholar. Receiving excellent grades wasn't enough for this energetic young lady. She also kept herself very busy and actively involved in school activities. A search of the yearbook showed she participated in many extracurricular pursuits as well. While I'm not sure uh, there were more, well, I'm sure there are more activities that she was involved that I speak of here, the yearbook positively identifies that Ms. Simba sh shared her skills as class secretary for both her freshman and sophomore classes. I'm not sure if she remembers this, but one of the highlights of her freshman year was the class attending two skating parties at Wickersham. Do you remember that? She does. <laughs> so other exciting trips that year resulted from participation in orchestra, and they also traveled to Vancouver, British Columbia, Everett, Bellingham, and they participated in the annual Skagit and Whatcom Country Music Fest County Music Festival. Her freshman year of 1941 says, with the accumulation of such a bright past in one year, this class of 1944 promises to be an invaluable group to Mount Vernon High School for the next uh, three years. Sadly, they could have not foreseen what was coming. During her sophomore year, she, she was in the top group of salespeople for Skagina where she earned $1 for selling 20 yearbooks. I'd like to see what the price is now for that, right? She participated in orchestra that year as well. Like so many who experienced extreme hardships when young, Miss Semba realized one sure way to, to success is through academic excellence. She met her future husband at the University of Minnesota she and her husband, Dr. Thomas Simba, ensured that their four children would experience the benefit of advanced opportunities, which you'll hear more here shortly. There's no telling what else she may have done or participated in if her life and her family's life had not been so sadly interrupted. We welcome Mrs. Simba, her son, Dr. Charles Simba, and guests back to her high school as a successful bulldog. Now, I would like to introduce Yoshiro Akamoto, who will share a little bit more information about Hannah and her family. Roy has been a true supporter of our schools by helping us as a facilitator with the Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction when he was here at LaVenture Middle School. Also helped us as an interim director for human resources and as a principal at Skagit Family Learning Center and also a uh, substitute for the superintendent position. With that, please help me welcome Mr. Okamoto. Well, okay. clearly I'm not getting taller. Um, I am humbled and very honored to make some remarks about uh, Mrs. Semba, uh, amazing story. Uh, actually, I think um, I'm honored and reflective because my grandparents 
were, who lived in LA were interned at Manzanar on the east side of the Sierras. So uh, this is a great honor. So Dr. Vivanco, members of the board, Dr. Simba, Mrs. Simba, Dr. Wadawa, and members of the staff, thank you very much for allowing me to make a few remarks here. Hannah Hayo Hayano Semba recently celebrated her 95th birthday. Amazing. She looks so youthful. <laughs> this is in March of 2021, and she resides in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hannah was born in Mount Vernon and was born in 1926 and was one of seven children born to immigrant or Issei parents who came to America from Japan in the early 1900s to forge a better opportunity, as my grandparents did in 1920. 1941, when Japan declared war on the United States, Hannah was living on a farm outside of Conway. As a 15-year-old student in her sophomore year at Mount Vernon High School, she had aspirations like typical American teenagers. She was the only Asian student in her class. However, Executive Order 9066, issued in February of 1942, barred the people of Japan, of Japanese ancestry, from traveling for more than five miles from their homes with a mandatory curfew at 8 p.m. By the summer of 1942, her life would change forever as one of nearly 120,000 people of Japanese ancestry were forced into concentration camps scattered across the Western United States. The family was given one week's notice to leave their homes, bank accounts were frozen, assets seized, each member of the family was allowed only two suitcases. 24 members of her extended family were placed into camps for up to four years. Hannah experienced incarceration at the internment camps in Tule Lake, California, and later at Heart Mountain, Wyoming. She graduated from a makeshift high school at Heart Mountain following World War II the family moved to Minneapolis to start a family-run grocery store, and Hannah attended McAllister College and trained as a dietitian at the University of Minnesota, where she met Thomas Semba, a young medical student. Thomas and his family were also incarcerated at Tree Lake. His father was arrested by the FBI after Perar and was considered an enemy alien was placed in the Special Department of Justice internment camp in Santa Fe, New Mexico. He was held there for four years without formal charges. Hannah married Thomas Semba and raised her family of four children in Minneapolis. Their mutual internment experience emphasized a desire to empower their children, Sansei, a third generation known as the Sansei, with a voice in American society through academic excellence. And as you may know, there's nothing like the power of a mother to influence the children's education. And it was very successful. Um, a voice that was not easy possible from the first generation East Say tenant farmers and uh, some of the xenophobic fears that interrupted opportunities for the second generation or the Nisei. All four children of the Sembas became physicians. Robert graduated from Stanford and the University of Minnesota Medical School and practices orthopedic surgery. Richard graduated from Yale and Stanford Medical School and is a professor of ophthalmology at John Hopkins, Wilmer I Institute. Laura graduated from Brown University and Brown Medical School and trained at the University of Chicago and UC UCLA as a pediatric maxillofacial surgeon. Charles, who is with us today, graduated from Carleton College and the University of Minnesota Medical School 
and is an adjunct professor of radiology at Stanford University School of Medicine and Biotechnology Executive. I'm honored to say these comments and proud of Mrs. Semba, or her husband Thomas Semba, who was a doctor, passed away in 1988. But what a lucky opportunity we have and an honor to have Mrs. Semba here. So thank you very much. It's an honor to meet you, honored to introduce you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Charles Simba. I'd like to say a, a few words. Let's give him a warm welcome. Uh, thank you very much. I, uh, our family is extremely honored, and uh, I thank the, the entire school faculty and the school board and all members that are attending here. I wanted to just give you a, a little uh, story of how this all came about. This is quite uh, uh, unexpected in a sense. But, uh, you know, I grew up in Minneapolis, uh, and uh, over the past 15 years, I've been researching the history of our family. How is it that we ended up in Minnesota? Uh, you know, uh, I was the only Japanese-American student in my high school, and uh, it wasn't until I started raising my own children that I began to wonder, you know, the, the story of my or origin. Oh. Uh, 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 of our family. And so for the past, past 15 years, I have been uh, researching uh, our, our story. One of the stories that never got told in our family, and it's very typical of the second generation Japanese and even the first generation Japanese uh, that came to the United States, is that the war years were never discussed. Uh, and uh, as I started researching, I realized in my work that my mother never had a chance to graduate from Mount Vernon High School. And so last month in March, um, or in March, rather, when I came uh, from California back to Minneapolis to celebrate her 95th birthday, she spontaneously just mentioned out of the blue, uh, it would be so wonderful to come back to Conway and Mount Vernon. Uh, and that just, I dawned on an idea. I went to the website after I flew back home. I got in touch with Terry. I didn't think anybody at the school would even respond. <laughs> And she answered right away, uh, and that in, in the subsequent weeks, uh, Tim uh, and others have helped put this together, and we are just blown away. So we are super appreciative to, to, to honor uh, my mother today. So thank you, uh, everyone, uh, for your hospitality. Thank you. All right, so I get the fun part. Hannah, I get to give you your diploma, along with some other folks over here. So, Dr. Vivanco and board director, <laughs> board member Ragusa, I'd like to present to you, uh, with great pride, Hannah Semba, Mount Vernon High School class of 1944. She has met all of the requirements necessary for graduation and um, required by the District Governing Board and the Board of Education in the state of Washington. So on behalf of the Mount Vernon School District and upon the recommendation of the faculty, it is my pleasure as superintendent to declare you graduate of the Mount Vernon School District with all the rights and honors. Congratulations.
A yoga corner. Oh, fantastic. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> awesome. Um, and just one little final note that if uh, I'm going to have, she can peruse these right here. These are Skajinas from 1941 and 42, but we also have a special gift for her. We actually have a Skajina for her from 1942, so that's going to be awesome for her to take a little keepsake. So again, big round of applause for our new graduate. I think now we're going to go to the party, okay? Here we go. <laughs> um, again, thank you all very much. really appreciate uh, you being here. And what, what a tremendous honor to, to ha make this happen. It's good practice for me, by the way. So this is the, the size I was used to when I used to do these before. So it'll be a great little transition from, you know, one to, what, 500? Yeah. Piece of cake. All right. Well, thank you all. Have a wonderful morning. And thank you. And again, one more big round of applause for, for Hannah. <laughs>